So today we're going to continue talking about the uh, equity risk. So last time we were talking about beta. We said there's two ways to get the beta, which is the regression beta based on the difference between companies stock price and the uh, stock price of the S&P 500 or the market portfolio and the second way is the bottom of beta which takes into account three things from the company the first thing is what kind of product is it okay is it a cyclical product or non-cyclical discretionary or non-discretionary product non-discretionary product is safer than a discretionary product okay because people continue to buy that product there's always demand for that product the second determining factor was operating leverage we said the company with higher fixed costs is riskier than the company with lower fixed costs and we discussed about that so today we're going to talk about the third one the financial leverage this one is simpler Okay, we take an example, uh, we have a restaurant, we start the restaurant with 10% equity and 90% loan. Okay, or we start the restaurant with 10% loan and 90% equity. Which one is riskier? Restaurant A or restaurant B? Why is restaurant A riskier? They have a lot of debt. Why does that make them a riskier company? Right? For cost of debt, they can go bankrupt. Okay? Uh, but for equity, it increases the fixed cost, interest payment. Interest payment on the debt is a fixed cost. Okay? So let's say that we started with $100,000 and the interest rate is 5%. Okay? How much is the fixed payment here on the debt every year? 5%. We have about 90,000. So what's 5% of 90,000? 4,500 every year, right? This one we just have a loan of $10,000. What's 5% of 10000 $500. So this one has a higher fixed cost. Every year we need to pay back this money in interest. In this one, we need to pay back this much money in interest every year. Okay? So it makes the earnings more volatile. Volatile means can change more easily. Okay? Uh, this is the increased earnings volatility, which increases the equity beta. So it's just like fixed cost. Okay? If we have a bad year here, the loss is not very much. Okay? Let's say one year we make zero profit. Here it's going to be minus 500. Okay? Here it's going to be zero profit, will be minus 4,500. Okay? Do you understand? So more volatile in this case. Okay, so this is called leverage. This is high leverage, high leverage, and this is low leverage. Do you know what leverage means? Leverage, we're talking about debt to equity ratio. How much debt do I have in my company compared to how much equity? Okay. Which is safer, high leverage company or low leverage company? Low leverage. Low leverage company, okay? So we can look at the debt to equity ratio. Okay, the, uh, what's the debt to equity ratio here? You have on your, for your exam, so you should know the equation. Nine. 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 Nine, or what's that in percent? Uh, what's nine in percent? Zero point zero nine. No, the other way around. 0 0.09 is 9%. But well, what is 9 in percentage points? 
What's 1 in percent? Oh, it's 100. 100 percent. Yeah. What's 9 in percent? 90. No. 900 percent. 900 percent. 1 is 100 percent. How is 9 90 percent? Right? 9 is 900 percent. Okay? What's the debt equity ratio here? Nine. Well, this one you said was 9, that's correct. Debt over equity, 90 over 10 is 9. That's 900%. What's this here? 1 over 9. 1 over 9, what's that? About 11%. 11. Okay, 0 0.011. 0 0.011 is 11%. So this has 11% debt equity ratio. This one has 900%. Where can we find the debt equity ratio for companies? Where do you think we can find the debt to equity ratio for companies? Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance, very good. Okay, so we go to Yahoo Finance. Tell me any company, let's check their debt to equity ratio. Somebody tell me a company. Any company? Hmm? Under Armour. Is that a company? Yes, here it is, Under Armour, listed in New York. So, key statistics. Okay, we go down here. Uh, we can see balance sheet, debt to equity. Uh, that's 40, that's not, so it's 40%, right? So, a lot of companies have that kind of a debt to equity ratio, around 40%. So. It means that uh, we usually have two parts equity for one part debt, right? 40 over 100 is equals to 40%. So most, that company has 40 debt and 100 equity. Okay? So there's a general rule for leverage, which is that your equity should be, you should have a 1 to 2 ratio. One debt for every two equity. Okay? If you're higher, then one to two, you might be too high leverage. That's just a very general rule, but it depends on the industry, okay? What do you think? If I'm in the electricity industry, can I ha have a higher leverage or lower leverage? Lower, 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 lower. No, higher leverage. In the electricity industry, it's very safe, so it's okay for me to have a high leverage, okay? The cost of debt will be low. I get a low interest rate, it's a very safe industry, so I can afford to have high leverage. But if I'm in an industry which is very risky, I can't afford to have high rev leverage. First of all, my product type is risky, okay? Then if I'm also getting risk on leverage, it's even worse, okay? So t can you think of a risky company? Can somebody tell me a risky company? Let's see what their debt to equity ratio is. Gucci, is Gucci, what's the name of the head company of Gucci? Dolce & Gabbana. Hey, what? Do you know the name of the Her Hermes, is it? What's the name of the head company of the luxury product? Hermes? Hermes is not listed in uh, the U US, it's listed in London. But well, let's. In Frankfurt, Munich, London. Let's see if they give the debt equity ratio now, because it's just for the companies listed in the US on Yahoo Finance. Mm. <laughs> Let's look at Twitter. Do you know Twitter? No. <laughs> Twitter debt to equity 36%, 36%, right? Slightly lower than Under Armour. So Twitter, sw slightly risky company. You know Twitter? Do you use Twitter? You don't use Twitter, but you know it. Okay, so what about a safe company? What's a safe company? Electricity company, maybe General Electric. General Electric in the US. Let's check General Electric and see. P statistics. 
that's equity 192. Okay? That's equity 192. So it's the opposite. They have two times debt for one equity, okay? That's an electric company. Because of their business, they can afford to have more debt. Okay? So you have to think about, we'll talk about the optimal capital ratio for a company later, but just generally now, we're looking at the leverage in the different companies. Okay? So, <coughs> so we can, for the first two factors, we can find the unlevered beta. We call it unlevered beta. Means not including leverage, okay? And then when we have the beta not including leverage for the product type, okay, that type of product, we can add in the leverage here, okay? So we use this equation. So uh, something strange happened. The square came up here. But you can look at your book. <laughs> So if you look at the page uh, 55, you can see an equation here. Okay. This uh, square, maybe the computer doesn't show the green symbol, this is beta, right? So this is levered beta is equals to unlevered beta times 1 plus 1 minus the tax right debt over equity. So this is the equation we will use. Okay. So we're going to look at the example of Disney. The regression beta for Disney is 0 0.95. So we looked at Bloomberg portal and we found the regression beta, 0 0.95. This beta is a levered beta because it is based on stock prices, which reflect leverage. And the leverage impact in the beta estimate is the average market debt to equity ratio during the period of the regression. So period of the regression was 2004 to 2008. So in that time, the average debt to equity ratio was 24%, right? So Disney relatively low leverage, okay? So then we use this equation to find the unlevered beta for Disney, okay? The current beta divided by, you can see in the, in the book, right? BU is Unlevered beta is equals to levered beta divided by. So we get the current beta, 0 0.95, divided by 1 plus 1 minus the tax price, multiplied by the average debt to equity ratio. So this is a percentage. So we don't put in here 24.6, it's 0 0.246, it's a percentage. Okay? And we find out the unlevered beta for Disney is 0 0.82. So unlevered beta means if the company had no debt, zero debt, okay, what would their beta be? So here is Disney's beta at the different levels of leverage. So this is the amount of debt they have. Uh, we, we can get confused sometimes between the debt to equity ratio and debt to capital ratio. Okay? Just to explain about the difference between the two of them. Okay, we had a restaurant. One restaurant had 10% uh, was equity, okay, and 90% was debt. So here the debt to equity ratio is going to be debt over equity, okay, is equals to 90 over 10, is equals to 900%, okay. But debt to capital, debt, capital means everything. Can anybody tell me, what would the debt to capital ratio be? Debt over total capital equals... What's debt? 90. What's the total capital? 100 equals... What percent is that? 0 0.9. 0 .9. Right, 90%. 90 over 100 is 90%. Okay? 0.9. So that's debt to equity ratio and debt to capital ratios. Two different ways of showing the relationship between debt and how much debt the company has. Okay? 
So obviously debt to equity one is much higher here. Then debt to equity is, is probably used more commonly. Okay? But this table we can see debt to capital, it tells us the percentage of debt we have. Okay? Here, 90% debt, 90%. Okay? So debt to capital is just telling us the percentage of debt. <coughs> so at 0%, the beta is 0 0.82. Now if Disney has 90%, 90% loans and 10% equity. Okay, the debt to equity ratio is 900%. The beta is going to be 5.42. Okay, so much more riskier company with that much debt. So we can see that debt has the large effect. Okay, on the riskiness of the company. Uh, so we have the different betas at the different levels. Disney's debt is currently around here. So they're around this section here. Do you have any question about this table? As we have more debt, we use this equation, right? We have more debt, the debt to equity ratio is going up, okay? So, it's going to be bigger and bigger. Right here, the debt to equity ratio is 900%. So this is going to be uh, 1 plus 1 minus t multiplied by 9. Okay, so it's going to be a bigger number. Beta will be higher. Uh, so, for, we can do this for every company. Okay, find their unlevered beta, and then figure out what's their beta at their every debt to equity ratio. Okay, and then what we do for any company is we find the average of the industry. Let's say you have a, a restaurant or a bookstore or like Disney, a media enter entertainment company. We find the average beta for the industry, okay? And then we look at your company. How much debt does your company have? And then this tells you your beta for your company. So betas are weighted averages, okay? So the beta of a portfolio is always the market value weighted average of the betas of the individual investments in that portfolio. So when we have a portfolio of investments in different companies, we find the weighted average of the betas. Uh, the firm beta can be the weighted average of the beta of its individual projects or its businesses. So this is important, right? So when we're when if we were making the bottom, we're going to look at in a minute the bottom up beta for Disney. We're going to have to break down Disney into different businesses because Disney doesn't just have one business. Okay, what kind of businesses does Disney have? Do you know? Movies. What else? Movies, TV, parks, parks, amusement parks. Toys. Toys. Yes. Okay. So each of those industry, industry is going to have a different average. Okay. Parks and uh, amusement park industry is very different from movie industry. Which one is riskier? Movie. Movie industry is riskier, right? You can have a movie, you spend a lot, of million, hundreds of millions of dollars, and you don't get back your money. Okay. So, for example. So we need to find the betas of all of the different businesses that Disney does, the industry beta. Okay. So this is how we do the bottom up beta. So your second assignment, you'll also be figuring out the bottom up beta for your companies. Okay. So first of all, we find out the business that the firm operates in. Uh, we can do that by looking at their accounts. On their accounts, they list their different business. Okay. We can also do that by just looking. If we just look quickly at Yahoo Finance, and we look at Disney on, on uh, Yahoo Finance. Okay. We can see that uh, if we just go to the company profile, we can even find information here in the profile. Okay. So. It says here, the company operates broadcast and cable television stations, radio networks, TV productions, 
Okay, it has the Walt Disney Resort, which includes theme parks, hotels, vacation clubs, and so on. Okay, uh, so it has those resorts. It has animated motion pictures. Uh, it has magazines, books, comic books. Okay, so that tells us the more or less the, the businesses that it's in. But if we want to find more specific information, we go to SEC filings. Okay, SEC filing is the annual report. So we go here to annual report. Do you understand annual report? Yeah. Okay, and then we click on full filing here. It's 10K, the annual report is called 10K. Okay, and then in here, we have a lot of different information, okay, about the business. We have uh, index to financial statements. Often in this one, notes the consolidated financial statements. It's like extra information. Okay, so here in this notes to consolidate notes to the financial statements, it tells us the businesses, right? Business, first one, media networks. Second one, parks and resorts. Third one, studio entertainment. Okay, then last one, consumer products. So ties and comics is all under consumer products. Okay, and then we can see how much money do they get from each sector. Okay, media networks, cable, parks and resorts, broadcasting. Okay, so we can get that information here. Revenues, do you understand revenues? Revenues, income, right? Where is Disney getting most of their revenues from in 2015? Media of these ones? Media networks. Media networks is the highest one, right? Consumer products is uh, five. Uh, yeah, total is four billion, right? Studio entertainment total is seven billion. Parks and resorts total is sixteen billion. Media networks total is twenty-three billion. Okay, so we are going to need that information because we're going to make a weighted average later, depending on the revenue. Okay, so when we're calculating our beta for Disney, we find the beta of each of these industries, average beta. And then, of course, we have to see how important is each of these industries to Disney. Okay? For example, consumer products not very important compared to media networks. So we have to make weighted average. Okay? I told you at the start of the course we need to understand weighted average, okay? often used in finance. So, <laughs> first we, find, we found the businesses. Then we need to find the unlevered betas of other firms in those businesses. Okay? So we can do this the long way or the short way. The long way is find all the companies and find all the companies regression beta and find all the companies debt to equity ratio and then find the unlevered beta for every company and then make the average. Okay? But good news, somebody already did that. Okay? We don't have to do that. Okay? It's just like the regression betas. Okay? There's only so many companies. Okay? And somebody has already done those kind of calculations. Okay? So we just need to go to the spreadsheet and find out what is the average unlevered beta for the industry. And find that information from the spreadsheet. Okay? So we, then we take uh, the weighted average of the unlevered betas. And then we find the debt to equity ratio of Disney, and we, we make find the final beta. So the bottom of beta, this is called the bottom of beta. This is better than the regression beta. Why? We saw in the regression beta there was a high standard error. But the bottom of beta has a low standard error because we use so many companies. Okay? The betas can reflect the current and future mix of businesses rather than the historical mix. So if we go back to Disney, we can see maybe the revenues changed in Disney, right? From 2013 to 2015 didn't change much, right? But we could imagine that, in that Disney started a new business, right? They didn't have media networks in 2013, okay? And then it didn't exist there and there. And then now media networks is their most important business, okay? then the regression beta is not that good because the regression beta is showing us the historical uh, result for Disney over the last 20 years or 30 years, okay? 
So the bottom of page will be showing us accurately what kind of business is Disney in today, okay? And how risky is that business? And then adjust for Disney's debt to equity ratio. So here we, we just made on the spreadsheet the business breakdown of Disney. We saw media networks, parks and resorts, studio entertainment, consumer products, okay? So we have to find some comparable firms. Media networks, we use all the radio and TV broadcasting companies in the US. There are 19 of those companies, okay? Their median average beta is 0.83. Their average debt to equity, 40%. I said that seems to be a general, around 40% we can see as a normal debt to equity ratio, okay? That means their average unlevered beta is 0 0.67. If we want, you don't have to do this, if we want to be more accurate, we can also take into account the cash the company has. Okay, but we're not going to do that, right? It just changes very slightly if we take into account the cash. Correct it for cash. Why? Because cash has a beta of zero. Okay? Cash has a beta of zero. So if we correct for cash, then we can change slightly. Uh, then next, parks and resorts. There are not enough parks and resorts companies in the US. So we look at all the global companies. There are 26 global companies. Probably, who owns the parks and resorts in Korea? Latte? Sam, Latte and Samsung, right? They can be included here too, right? Then, what's the average beta of all those companies? Their debt to equity is higher because that kind of industry is more stable. They can afford to have a higher debt to equity ratio, okay? And so on, okay? For, also, for the movie companies, there are 19 movie companies in the US. And consumer products, they figure out their main consumer product is toys. Right? Do you have any Disney toys? Did you have when you were a kid? No? You said you like Disney, right? You like Disney? You went to see the movie? Yes. Yes? Zootopia? Do you have any Zootopia toy toys? Do you want one? If I gave you one, would you be happy? Yes. What kind of one? Which is your favorite character? Who's your favorite character from Zootopia? Judy? What kind of animal is that? Rabbit? No. Alright, so maybe somebody has some Disney toys they don't want to tell me, right? You guys, you don't want to tell me, okay? But anyway, that's their main consumer product, okay? So they have a uh, beta and debt equity ratio and so we found that kind of information we need for the business, okay? So then just, what did they do? Uh, this is looking at just some background, okay? For example, this is looking at the process. These are the studio entertainment companies in the US. There are a lot of studios. Do you know these companies? Mm -hmm. Any of these Camelot Entertainment? You can see for the movies, right? Lionsgate. So they get their market capitalization and their total debt, and that's how we find the debt to equity, market debt to equity ratio, beta of all the companies. Okay, so we find the beta of all the companies from Yahoo Finance. Okay, we find this information from Yahoo Finance, and we get the average in the end. Okay, 1.57. Okay, so that's the longer way of doing it. So, uh, then let's look at how we calculated Disney's bottom up beta. So, we start with Disney's revenues by business, which is on the next slide. Uh, then we estimate the value as a multiple of revenues. Okay? Now, we can do that a couple of ways. We can just simply do it by looking at the revenues, but we can also do it by looking at the estimated value over sales. Every uh, company or every business has a different value to the company. So the revenues alone may not tell us the value of that, right? For example, the movie business might make a high revenue, right? But the cost of the movie business could be very high, okay? 
So actually it's not that valuable to the business. The toys might be more valuable because they might, we might make a very big profit on the toys. So we, we can use another spreadsheet to check the estimated value for sales. But for your assignment, you don't have to do that, right? Let's go in a step further, more detail. You can just use revenues, right? But we can also find the estimated value for sales. So for example, for Disney, these were their revenues in 2008, okay? Sim similar pr uh, proportion as 2015, okay? Then this one has the highest, media networks has the highest estimated value over sales. So we would multiply by the estimated value over sales. We can find this from a spreadsheet, okay? And then we get the breakdown of, this is 58% of the business, media networks, right? 29% of the business, parks and resorts. 10% of the business, studio entertainment. And consumer products, just 1% of Disney's business, okay? And we find, we have the unlevered beta for each one. And then we multiply by the proportion, and we find the average unlevered beta for Disney. That's the weighted average, okay? Weighted average, 58% multiplied by 0.7. 29% multiplied by 0.5, okay? Gives us 0.733 for Disney. Okay? So, if we want, we can correct for cash. Cash has a beta of zero, okay? Again, you don't need to do this on your assignment, but it's just to do more accurately, okay? How much of percent of the company is cash, okay? This much is the revenues, and this much is the cash. So we make another weighted average, and we find this is, beta is going to be lower, because cash has zero risk. Okay. So we take all of the assets, total assets is uh, business plus cash, business plus cash, cash over business plus cash, business over business plus cash, okay? It's a weighted average, and we get 0 0.688. So, that, that next thing we need to do is we need to find the, we need to lever it up by finding the debt ratio for uh, Disney. Okay, the debt to equity ratio for Disney. So, uh, we can see that uh, here we can see the debt to equity ratio of comparable firms, which we can use here. Okay? At the start, uh, then we have the proportion of each business for the Disney, how important each business is, okay? So, here we have the debt to equity ratio for each uh, business, and we multiply the levered beta by the debt to equity ratio of each business, the unlevered beta by the debt to equity ratio of each one, and we get the levered beta for each one. And then we find the weighted average, and we find our, the number that we were looking for, which is the bottom up beta for Disney, here. Okay? So, uh, we, we find the debt to equity ratio of each specific business. Each one has a different debt to equity ratio. Okay? Uh, parks and resorts, as we said, can afford to have the higher debt than the uh, media networks, okay? So we can do that, we can either just use the debt to equity ratio of the competitors, or we can find the debt and equity, if we could find the debt to equity, it's better in Disney. In this case, they were able to find the debt and equity in Disney in each section, and then find the debt to equity ratio, okay? So you have to look for this in the Financial statements. Do they have the debt to equity of each business in the financial statements of your company? Okay, if they don't, you can use just the average debt to equity ratio of the industry. Okay? So, and make that proportion for your company. So, then we find the cost of equity. We can use the uh, equation for cost of equity, risk free rate plus beta times the risk premium. Okay, and we find the cost of equity for Disney is 8.91%. So, 
you, this is one of your tasks in your second assignment. So do you have any question about this uh, bottom of beta, calculating the bottom of beta? I will give you the instructions to follow the instructions. Okay? So do you have any question? So let's look at the book on that section. So let's look at page 56. Okay? So here's an example of a company which has three different businesses. So look at page 56. Okay? We have this business has cosmetics and pharmaceuticals and household cleaning. Okay? So they have revenues 10 million, 20 million, 20 million. Okay? So how much is each one worth to the company? Household cleaning, 20 over 50, 40%. Okay? Pharmaceuticals, 20 over 50, 40%. Cosmetics, 10 over 50, 20%. Okay? So that's uh, breaking down. Okay, but here we did an example of a Procter and Gamble. Okay? So we can look at this example here. So turn back to page 55. So just uh, we'll start on the second paragraph. So first we need to get the average betas of the firms in each business. Okay? We do this by collecting the data of the beta for each firm operating in that business. If there are not enough similar companies in that country, like we saw with uh, Disney's theme parks, there's not enough theme park companies in the US, then we can consider a global sample. The next step is to calculate the average unlevered beta in each business. The unlevered beta is the beta of a company without any debt. So unlevering a beta removes the financial effects from leverage. Okay, we use this equation. So for example, if the average beta is in this company is 1.2, the average debt to equity ratio is 110%, and the marginal tax rate is 30%, then the unlevered beta is 0.68. Okay, then we use the betas from uh, each business, we find the weighted average, we turn to page 56 of each one. Okay, and then we calculate the current debt to equity ratio for our firm. And then we uh, can lever it again using this equation. So for example, our firm has a debt to equity ratio of 2, 200%. The tax rate is 30% and the unlevered beta is 0 0.68. So then we find the levered beta for our firm up to 1.63. So, uh, just to go through the step just again, right? With Disney, we take away the leverage from Disney to get the unlevered beta. Okay? We get the divisional betas for Disney, find the divisional betas for each one. Okay? Uh, find the value or the revenues of each of the divisions and then using the weighted average we can find an unlevered beta. We need to take into account the debt to equity ratio of each business to lever up the beta, to find the levered beta. Okay? Then we, again we use the uh, proportion we found earlier of all the businesses to find the average levered beta for the company and this tells us the lever beta of the company tells us more accurately the risk of Disney. Okay? We saw the regression beta was 0 0.95. So the lever beta, 0 0.9, not that different. Okay? So the lever beta, what the lever beta is telling us, media networks are this risky. Okay? Disney is in media web networks. All media network business is this risky. Disney has this much debt to equity in media net networks. Okay? So Disney, Disney's total, including the average risk for this business, plus Disney's debt to equity ratio, this is Disney's risk for media networks. Okay? Then the same for parks and resorts. This is the average around the world. This is how risky parks and resorts business is. This is Disney's debt to equity ratio for parks and resorts. Disney's risk for parks and resorts. Okay? The same for the other two businesses. So. This gives us a more accurate idea of the risk of Disney. So let's discuss this issue. 
So assume you are the head, the CFO, Chief Financial Officer at Disney. The head of the movie business has come to you with a new big budget movie, Zootopia 2. Okay, he wants you to pay for the new movie. He claims that his analysis of the movie indicates it will get a return of equity of 12%. Okay? Are you going to pay for this movie? So the movie is going to make 12% profit. Okay, Zootopia 2. Yes, it is higher than the cost of equity for Disney as a company. So we saw the cost of equity for Disney as a company using this bottom of beta is 8.9%. Okay? No, it is lower than the cost of equity for the movie business. So we saw that the beta for the movie business was this much. Okay? Uh, and, sorry, the studio entertainment was this much. So it means that the cost of equity just for studio entertainment business is 13.5%. Okay, so it's lower. 12% is lower than the cost of equity for the movie business. Disney, it's paying 13.5%. Okay? So which is it going to be? Discuss with your partner. The movie is going to make a profit of 12%. Okay? That is higher than the cost of equity for Disney as a company but lower than the cost of equity for the movie business, Disney's movie department. Okay? So discuss with your partner. Are you going to take the project or not? Yes or no? Unlevered beta multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate multiplied by debt to equity ratio. Okay? So let's take just one example, right? So let's say we take the uh, here, let's say we take uh, 900%. Okay? The answer is 5.42. So 900%, we have the unlevered beta. Unlevered beta is 0 0.82. Okay, so the levered beta is going to be equal to 0 0.82 multiplied by 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate, which was 0 0.38, multiplied by 9. Okay, if we do this equation, that's going to be equals to 5.42. Okay, do you understand? So we use that equation and we find out for each debt to equity, what's the beta? Okay, so that's important, right? Because the more debt we have, the riskier the company is, the higher the beta is going to be. So this is just a calculation. You might ask, where did we get this equation from? Why do we have this equation, right? It's just commonly accepted practice, this one, of calculating, adding in the debt to equity ratio, okay? Uh, to calculate how much riskier is it when we have more debt. Okay, so no debt, beta is 0 0.82. Okay, even if we have no debt, it's, there's still risk because of the product type. Okay, but if we have a lot of debt, it gets a lot riskier. 
We'll talk more about this. We have a class about the optimal debt ratio later. How, we're going to talk about it after a few weeks. How much debt should a company have? How much equity should a company have? So we'll talk about that more then, okay? So good question. So let's look back at this question then. We said that Disney is going to make a profit of 12%, okay? Their movie business, the cost of equity, cost them 14% to get money for their business in, in movies, okay? Well, as a company, it costs them 9% to get money, okay? So are you going to invest in the project? So hands up who says yes. Disney has a low cost of equity for a company, so we can use that money to pay for the movie. Who says no? Hands up. Okay, so the correct answer is no. Okay, that's one advantage of this table. It tells us what's the risk for each business. Okay, so for Disney, studio entertainment division, it's costing them that much to get money. Okay, so they need to make they need to make a profit of more than 13.5% if they're going to make a movie. Why? Because the movie is risky. Movie business is risky. So it doesn't make sense, okay? If I am going to make 10% on a movie, it's not a good enough return. Movies are too risky, okay? What's not risky here? Not risky, toys or TV and radio, okay? TV and radio is not risky. So if I make 10% profit in, t in toys, yes, take the project, it's not risky. Okay, do you understand? I can make 10% profit. So what would happen if we said yes, in the end, we'd stop investing money in all of these things and we'd only invest money in the movie industry, right? Because we'd say, oh, 12% profit, that's great. I'm not investing in the toys, they can only make 10%, right? Even though 10% is higher than the risk. So take all the money out of toys and invest in movies. And then over time, anyway, the company is going to get riskier and the company's beta will go up to here. Because we, if we close down the toy industry, don't invest there. If we close down the TV industry and stop investing there, and we invest everything in the movie industry, we're just going to be a movie company. And this is going to be our beta. So we can't make the decision. Uh, to invest because our company cost of equity is lower. We have to look at each division individually, okay? The risk has to be measured against the return. You understand return? Possible return. So the correct answer was no, okay? 12% profit sounds high, but that's our expected profit. Zootopia 2 could be a disaster, right? Sometime, especially the sequel. The sequel movie could be a disaster. Whereas, if we're selling TV programs or radio shows, it's much safer, it might not be a disaster, okay? So any question about that? Question? No? Okay, let's, so let's finish there for today. Where is the attendance list? Yeah.